Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. In today's video, I want to share over 25 plus tips and tricks for the iPod Touch. Now, I will be using a 6th generation iPod Touch to present these tips, tricks and hidden features which you can utilize these tips on just about any iOS device. My primary goal is to equip you with the knowledge and enhance your experience with your iPod. So let's dive in. All right, tip number one, how to fall asleep to music. So basically, if you launch your music application and you start playing some kind of music before you go to sleep, if you forget to turn that thing off, your battery will be dead by the time you wake up. So what you can do is you can set a timer so that the music stops playing when that timer hits zero. All you have to do is first pick any song that you like and start playing it. I'm not gonna do it right now, but in real world, you would actually play the music that you want and then you go back out go to clock and from here pick how many minutes you want that music to keep playing just let's just do 10 minutes for for this examples sake and then go to when timer ends right here and all the way at the bottom it's gonna say stop playing that means stop playing music and then click set click start and you're good to go so if your music is playing and if the timer is running the music will stop when this timer hits zero. So that's how you fall asleep to music. Absolutely fantastic tip. All right, so the next tip has to do with your emails. So let's launch the mail application. And let's say that by mistake, you erased an email and it's gone. All you have to do to bring that email back is to shake the iPod and then this menu comes up. And when it says undo trash, you simply tap undo and the email that you mistakenly deleted comes right back. Now, one of the other features that I like is you can turn the entire iPod into a grayscale mode. So again, you go into settings and you remain in accessibility. So we came here through general settings, accessibility, and from here, simply turn grayscale on. As soon as you do that, everything on your iPod will turn black and white. The benefit here is that it's gonna ease off on your eyes. And to some people, it just looks cool. Now go back in the settings and disable it if you want the colorful world back. And while we're in here, I'm gonna show you one more thing that allows you to customize your phone a little bit. So as you can see on the top here, the general is just plain text. If you tap this button shapes, oops, the button shapes right over here, it actually puts it into a gray box, okay? And that reflects across the entire settings menu. Alrighty, just a quick tip to allow you to customize your thing. Uh, go back into accessibility if you don't like it. Simply turn off the button shapes and you're back in business. Now another tip that I like is how you can zoom in on pictures, but I'm not talking about zooming in by pinching in. This is a different secret zoom menu that you have to enable. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to settings. You wanna go to accessibility and you wanna go into zoom and from here, make sure this zoom window is enabled. And all you have to do to activate the zoom window is tap the screen three times. One, two, three, boom, it's right there. To enable the zoom feature, use this bar at the bottom to zoom in, and that's gonna bring the window that allows you to zoom in on stuff. Okay, so wherever you have the window, it's gonna uh, zoom that right on your face. Uh, tap again three times to bring up the menu and zoom out to make this thing disappear. So let me show you how that works when you're zooming in on pictures. So let's go out, go to photos, and let's just pull up a photo right here. Tap the screen three times to enable zoom, one, two, three. And then from here, simply zoom in. And as you can see, uh, I can zoom in on the eyes in a very precise fashion. Once I've inspected anything that I wanna zoom in on, I can tap the screen three times and I can simply zoom out and that makes sure that window disappears. Now while we're in here, let me show you one more thing. Let's just zoom in really quick. You do have the option to pick some filters. So if you tap a filter, you can do inverted, grayscale, and grayscale, inverted, or low light. Let me just show you what that means. Let's just pick inverted and that's going to basically uh, invert all the colors on the item that you're zooming in on. So that's my eyes currently inverted. Doesn't look too bad. On top of that, if you bring the menu again by tapping in three times, choose a filter, you can do grayscale, and that's gonna give you black and white zoom in, and then tap in three times, bring up the menu, make this zoom in disappear, tap anywhere, and it's gone. You can ignore that. 
All right, so the next step has to do with trimming your videos. So let's uh, go into the photos application and uh, let's just pick any video. And let's say that this video is actually too long for you guys. You can trim this video right in the photos application. All you have to do is you can tap any one of these arrows on the edge, the black arrows. There's one over here and one over here. Tap and hold and that brings up the trim menu and you can trim the video as you can see I'm doing on the screen right now. Once you're ready, it's going to select the portion that you want to keep and then you press trim and you get two options. You can either trim the original video and that's going to make you lose the part that you're trimming out or you can save as a new clip. So you will retain the original clip but the trimmed portion will be saved as a new clip. Alrighty? That's how you trim a video on the iPod. All right, so the next step has to do with notifications. We get a lot of notifications on our iPods, iPhones, whatever. So if you go into the settings, and if you go into the main screen, uh, simply look over here and go into notifications. From here, you can sort them manually or you can sort them by time. If you sort them by time, um, if you get a message, it shows on the top. If you get a mail, it shows on top of the message. But if you sort them manually, it groups similar items together, but it groups them in the order that you see at the bottom. So the messages are going to be on the top, reminders are going to be behind, underneath the messages, and calendar is going to be underneath both of these guys and so on. What you can do is you can change this order. So if reminders are more important to you, they can actually show up all the way on the top when you get a notification right over here pull that up so how you do that is you click edit and then you can move the messages underneath the reminders so if you get a reminder that's going to show up on top of the messages grouped all by themselves don't forget to click done when you're ready so when you pull this down anytime you get a reminder it's going to be on top of the messages and messages will be at the bottom now the other thing that I like doing with the notifications is to change the way I receive them. So once you're in this menu, let's just pick messages to show you the example. So if I go in here, if I get the bottom here, it gives me the option to pick the style of the notification. I can get a banner which slides over the top or I can get a mid screen alert. Let me show you what each one of these looks like. So if you go out here, let me just go into my messages here and do a test message send and this is the center screen notification style okay let's just close that go back into the settings and then let's pick banner style I'm gonna show you what that looks like as well so let's do one more test message now this time it's gonna pull down from the top this is called the banner style notification and the good news is you can do this with any one of these things over here so you can customize the style of the notification that you receive either the banner style or the center screen pop-up now one more option you have on the iPod is to silence calls and alerts when the iPod is locked alrighty so you can enable do not disturb so when your iPod is in fact locked nobody can bother you or if you're asleep overnight nobody can bother you nobody can wake you up so all you have to do is go to settings go to do not disturb and from here manually enable this and once you enable this you'll see a moon icon on the top that means do not disturb is in fact enabled and then you can actually disable this and actually schedule a very specific time for example from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. if you are sleeping you do not want to be disturbed and if you do that also that's going to make sure any notifications or calls you get are completely silent and do not bother you now even when do not disturb is actually enabled you can actually allow calls from certain people if they're very very important could be your girlfriend could be your boyfriend could be your family members so if you have anybody that you rather not miss a call no matter what you can always allow calls from them even in the do not disturb mode now if you guys did not know your uh, iPod comes with a built-in dictionary so if you are browsing the net let's just go to any website GameSpot 
and uh, you're looking at an article and you're, you're not sure what that one word means, let's say you don't know what crushing means, simply tap and hold on the word. Let's just wait for this thing to load. All right. So tap and hold on crushing and then click define. And that's going to pull up the dictionary and give you a full definition of the word crushing. And you can do this for any word that you please. Once you're done, click done and you'll be back at the website you were looking at. All right, so let's say you were in the photos and you were browsing your pictures and you accidentally deleted a photo. You click delete and now you're in panic because you think it's gone. Not really. So what you have to do is go back to the collections, click albums and simply tap on recently deleted, tap on the screen and recover the picture and this picture will be back exactly where you first had it. Okay, so if you accidentally delete pictures, they will stay in that folder for a while. And just to be precise, uh, the pictures will stay in this folder for 30 days. All right, so the next tip has to do with managing your battery, your storage, and your iCloud account all in one place. So simply go into settings and scroll down to general. And from here, go into usage. Here you have three different options. You got iCloud, storage, and battery. Tap on battery. And this basically shows you how long your battery has been running since the last charge. How long has it been on standby? And uh, at the bottom here, it shows you which part of your iPod has been using the battery most. So as you can see, the home screen has been eating a lot of battery. So have the settings, which is this area right here. Because I've been showing this to you guys for the last couple minutes, the settings is taking a lot of battery already and then you look here and you can see you can analyze uh, what portions of the phone you use most which is draining your battery life and maybe you can make some tweaks so the battery lasts a little bit longer next up you can look at the storage it says you have available storage of 10.9 gigs and you're using 1.3 gigs if you tap manage storage it's going to show you what is using your space and it's going to break down all the applications. Now here's one special tip. Normally when you want to uninstall an application, you go to the home screen and you tap and hold and then you press X to delete that application. Now when you're in this mode, this blue apron um, application can be deleted right over here. So this is a different way to delete an application. Instead of doing it at the home screen by tapping and holding, you can come right in here, go into the app and tap delete to get rid of that application. But anyway, going back over here, so this is the storage compartment over here. It gives you a nice stats of what's going on with your storage. And if you go back out here, you can do the same thing for your iCloud. So I have five gigs free iCloud. Everybody gets that with your iCloud account. Uh, you can go into manage and you can actually see how that stuff is being used and it gives you a really nice breakdown. So you can sit down and inspect all these things and if you don't want anything, for example, I don't want this over here, uh, I can edit and I can delete it. So this way you can free up space on your limited 5 gig iCloud account. Another cool tip is if you go into the settings and if you go into general accessibility, you can invert the entire color scheme of the iPod. So tap this, now you got a black and white menu. But if you go out, everything is inverted. It may look cool, so some people like to keep this for a little bit until it gets annoying. But if you're done, uninstall that and you get the regular colors back. The next step has to do with the camera. So if you launch the camera for the first time, you're not going to see this grid. So to enable this grid, which helps with aligning your pictures, you have to go into the settings. Let's go to the main screen and scroll down to photos and camera, tap it and scroll down one more time and make sure the grid is enabled. If you disable the grid, you're not going to see that grid that actually helps with aligning your photos properly. All right, so if you're taking a picture, what you can do is you can change the exposure of the scene. So if I'm over here and I think that this is too dark, what I can do is I can tap over there and I can use my finger to increase the brightness or reduce the brightness. 
to use the proper term, you're increasing the exposure or you're lowering the exposure, okay? So make sure you actually tap on the screen. So you tap anywhere you want, and then you increase the exposure by sliding up or decreasing the exposure by sliding down. Alrighty, so this way you can modify some pictures to your liking. The next step is one of my favorites. So if you go into the settings, and if you go into general, if you scroll down, you see something called restrictions. I already have this enabled. If you never enabled it before, the first time you tap it, it's gonna ask you to pick a password. And I just picked a simple password. And from here, you can actually disable apps on the home screen. And without the password, nobody can enable them. So let's uh, turn on off the camera. If you don't want people taking pictures with your camera, uh, the FaceTime disables automatically when you turn off the camera. Uh, let's uh, turn off Siri. Uh, let's turn off Safari so nobody can browse the web. And if you go back out, you'll see that those options have disappeared. So the Safari is gone, the camera is gone. To re-enable them, you have to go back into the settings, same place, go to restrictions, tap it. You have to put your password in, and then you can re-enable them as you please. Again, if you go down here, there's a lot more you can do. So I do want you guys to take a look at all these options on how to create restrictions on your iPod. So you can hide apps and settings from prying fingers and prying eyes. Alrighty, so you can disable in-app purchases. You can disable people from deleting your apps unless you put the password in yourself. You can even disable people from installing apps, which may save you some money because sometimes people will go into the app store and they'll just randomly start buying applications and it's gonna be costing you money. Now when you pull the uh, notifications panel down and you scroll about, you'll see that everything is transparent. This is what Apple calls translucency. So if I'm in this application right over here and I pull down the notifications panel, I'll get a slight sensation of what's in the back because of the translucency. You can actually disable that. You can go into the settings uh, go into general, go to accessibility, go to increase contrast, tap reduce transparency, and then now you get a solid black notifications and today panel, okay? You can also darken the colors on your phone, you can also reduce the white point, and this is going to be, as you can see, the brightness slightly decreases when you tap this thing, and that's going to be another option that eases off pressure on your eyes. Now one more thing, as you know, if you pull from the bottom up, you'll get the control center. Now, what if you're in an app? Let's say you're in, the, um, in this application, but you do not want the control center to come up every time you swipe up, alrighty, by mistake. What if you're playing a game and your game, game requires you to swipe everywhere? So you don't want the control center popping up every single time you're, you're in an application, you can disable it. You can go to settings, go to the main screen, and on the top here you'll see control center, tap this guy, and you can uh, disallow access within apps by turning this off, okay? And you can do the same thing for the lock screen. So if you don't want the control center accessible in the lock screen, you can disable it. But let's do the apps first. Let me show you how this works. Go back into the, any app, try to bring it up. It's not going to come up. Okay, so if you do want it, just keep it enabled. Now here is another one of my favorite features. Let's go to Safari, and let's say that I frequent certain websites all the time. What I can do is I can tap the share button in the middle at the bottom, and I can create a shortcut. So if I tap this add to home screen, it's gonna allow me to pick a name and it's gonna give me the link and I can click add. What happens is it sends an icon on your home screen that goes directly to that website that you just added to your home screen. Now let's do one more. Let's go to Amazon or let's go to, um, yeah, let's just go to Amazon and tap on the share screen, tap on add to home screen, and click add. And you can rename these things, so don't worry about the names over here. And uh, so let's say that both of these games, I mean both of these uh, home screen icons were gaming websites. 
If you tap him, it takes you straight to that website. The other thing I like to do is I like to put these things in a folder all by themselves and then name the folder something relevant. Click done and now I have all my gaming links in one folder. I can tap this, boom, take me straight to game, GameSpot. And again, you can do this for gaming, you can do this for shopping, you can do this for, for interesting articles, whatever you need. A very nice way to organize a quick access list of things that you like. All right, so the next tip has to do with the keyboard. So let's launch the messages application and the keyboard is right there. Some of these letters have accented versions, okay? For example, C can be written in different versions, especially if you're gonna communicate in a different language. So if you tap an old C, it gives you all the other different accented options for that word. So you can go for this option simply by dragging your finger right on top of it. Now, what if you wanna master the iPod completely? You do know that there's a free user guide available right in iBooks. So all you have to do is go to iBooks and search for user guide, and that's gonna bring all the options. You can get user guides for the iPad, for the iPhone, but here is the user guide for the iPod. You tap that, and you simply click get and that goes into your library it's a hundred percent free all right so the next tip is if the text for you is too small on the iPod you can change the size to see it easier all you have to do is go to settings display and brightness and from here tap on the text size and you can change the text size and this text size is going to reflect in places like the mail the calendar the notes the settings and more and then, as you can see, you can go quite large if you want to. Now, while we are in this menu, I just want to show you a side tip. You can also bold the text. So if the text is not bold enough for you, if you want to increase visibility, you can tap this icon, and that's going to bold your text. However, it's going to require that you restart your uh, iPod. Now, the final tip is how to create little abbreviations for yourself on your keyboard. So let me go into the messages. And uh, let me type in OMG. Now, as you can see, I have a suggestion here that says, oh my God. If I tap it, it gives me the full sentence. This is something you can make yourself. So all you have to do is go into the settings, go to general, and go to keyboard, and tap on shortcuts. And from here, you can see for OMG, I have, oh my God, and then for OMW, it says on my way, and then OYG, O your God. So if somebody sends me OMG, I give them back a reply saying OYG. Now you can add more and create your own. Tap this, let's just try SSS, and let's just say SSS, SSS, save. Go back out, go to the keyboard, delete this, Type in S, 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 and as you can see, the sentence that you typed shows right over here. You tap it, it comes right up. So that's the keyboard shortcuts that you can create as you please.